My name is Tracy. I'm an adaptive diver and I have ALS. I joined the Navy right out of high school. There weren't a lot of women on ships at the time. I was the only girl in my class, which is kind of how it was for me throughout my Navy career. There weren't a lot of gals. I was a communications officer and electronics officer. I used to regard myself as kind of fierce, you know, not scary fierce. I was never that, but like um, bold, living life boldly. I identified as a scuba diver. That's who I was. So when the disease hit, it's like, it's not just I'm going to lose my ability to walk, use my hands, speak. It's, I'm not going to be the same person anymore. It was going to take away my identity because who am I? I'm a diver and I'm bold and, you know, fierce. And I thought, I don't want to give up my identity yet. I don't have to. And I started Googling, you know. I, I was a diver all this time. I didn't know about adaptive diving. Um, but I finally got the right search words and happened upon Dive Heart. And I reached out to him. I said, hey, look, you know, I used to dive. I want to dive again, but I can't really walk. And I thought, you know, all I really need is help getting on and off the boat. I get in the water, I'll be fine. And I got down there and I realized, gosh, I, I kind of need more than just on and off the boat. Um, people, it's not intentional but there's an unconscious bias that I think most of us carry. When we see someone who's disabled, and with speech it's even worse, um, they tend to, to maybe not think the same of them, um, a little bit less. It's almost like they kind of forget I'm a human sometimes, you know, um, but with this team, they weren't like that. They were talking to me one-on-one -on -one and they would tease me, which was awesome. <laughs> you know, making fun of me. Yes, please, I'm one of you, dive buddies, you know. And so it was not only this experience of diving, but also the camaraderie and belonging. Getting in the water, is so liberating because when I'm down there, I no longer am worried about hurting myself, falling or, or all that clumsiness. And I'm free, I'm free. I, I feel like when I'm diving, I'm flying. You know, there's nothing to pull me down and I, I, can, I can breathe in and out to just where I'm in the water column. I am in control of that, and it just feels so good. When I'm down there, it's just unadulterated joy that I feel in that moment. There's a lot of physical adaptations, obviously. Um, I dive with a full face mask because if I get a larynx, larynx a spasm. I need to be able to breathe through my nose. My feet don't work so great. Uh, so I use hand paddles, you know, work around those things. And there's mental adaptations too. I was always very independent underwater. I still am to an extent, but I realized it's okay to, to trust a little and give up a little bit of that so that they can help me where I needed to be successful and overcome this challenge, this diving challenge. The imagine the possibilities slogan on its face, it's you can dive, everyone can dive. And for a lot of people who didn't think they could, that is true. It's more than that uh, for me. When I go by people on the street, 
in my wheelchair with my wetsuit, I feel, I feel fierce. <laughs> I feel empowered. I feel strong. <laughs> um, I feel that everything is a little bit more attainable.